fans this is the minnesota hockey connection we got a special guest today jeremy and jeanette and we're going to talk uh, hockey day minnesota with him uh, youth hockey and we'll talk all all the other teams wild umd golfers and uh, high school that's which is going to start in a couple weeks i'm um, glad to have you jeremy Thanks, yeah Good to see you well, let's get right into it. Um, you're on the committee for Hockey Day Minnesota. Yep. So um, when did you get, get this committee started, and who's on this committee? Well, there's a handful of um, local volunteers uh, from Glen Avon and uh, Portman Rinks. We uh, started about two years ago, I'd say. Wow. Um, just inquiring about what needed to be done to bring Hockey Day to Duluth, uh, working on details with the proposal and and then just figuring out what each committee member needed to do to to make this thing a reality so for two years you've been working this yeah it's a big pro progress uh, process I'm sorry but um see Hockey Day Minnesota has been going on for about I say about 10 years this will be huh? the 10th anniversary okay, this year good yeah. good because yep. I remember going up to Bidette once Lake of the Woods uh, Rapids Moorhead had it, Hermantown had it, yep. Minnetonka had it, um, St. Paul had it twice, St. Paul Johnson up in the Lake Pillen and downtown at the airport. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a big deal this year, the 10th anniversary. Um, uh, Fox will be stationed up here this year to do, um, do the broadcast, and, and uh, they're pretty excited about the location down at Bayfront, too. And how much room for fans will there be, I mean, at the Bayfront? I mean, if, let's say the, everything goes right. And you got the stands up there. How many people do you expect that can you get? You know, I'm not entirely sure the number on the stands. You know, but then with the with the amphitheater, like uh, right st seating and right. Uh, uh, the grounds. You know, I I would say similar to what some of the uh, uh, concerts hold down there. Oh uh, wow! I, I don't you know, yeah. and I I can't say that for sure. But, right. Um, you know. I'd say in the three to four thousand range would probably be, yeah. um, in a, for you know, you know, for to see to see the rink and everything. Right. And right now, let's say the worst happens, the weather and that. Right now, the plan is to go inside at the heritage. Heritage. Yep. That's yep. the plan right now, but that can change too. That's correct. Yeah. And um, so. What do you guys do now? Meet once a month, once a week? Or? Right now, we've bumped it up to uh, every two weeks. Yeah, it's getting closer uh, yep, just, now. <laughs> just to make sure every every uh, committee is kind of on task and what, what needs to be done. Uh, any communications that have been done with the community, whether it be Daha or the rinks or the city or you know the mayor, whoever uh, we're talking with, we want to make sure everybody's updated. So, again, everybody's on the same page of of what's going on so right this is going to be a big event for Duluth and for hockey in general and I think you know you couldn't find a better area for community hockey and doing this hockey no day in Minnesota okay what are the I know Duluth East is going to be playing Lakeville North yep yep kind what's of the a, other game a 2015 uh state tournament rematch there yeah. in the double a and then uh Denfeld will be playing um Eveleth Gilbert in the uh, single a game okay um, no Normally, they'll have a uh, women's game uh, as well during Hockey Day, but unfortunately, uh, this year, uh, due to the uh, date of the event, um, the women's hockey team will be in playoffs or just on the verge of playoffs, I believe. So, um, unfortunately, we have no control over the schedule. That's a Fox Sports North right. um, scheduling. And with, uh, with the Minnesota Wild, they try to schedule around when they're going to be playing night games. Right. And... Um, and this was the only date that they could figure out right. uh, around that time of year. Yeah, but other years, I mean, when they had Hockey Day in Minnesota, they, like you said, they had the two boys games and they had a girls games later that they broadcast. It was on during the day, but yep. they broadcast it later. But then they had the gopher game at five and then the wild game at eight. 
I think the Wild are, this is the first time they're out of town. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, down in St. Louis, I think. I think, I think you're right. Yeah. And so they haven't made the decision on the college game they're going to put on, but it can be, it'll either be the Gophers or the UMD, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know what game uh, they've decided, you know, they, again, that's all a, a Fox Sports North thing um, in terms of scheduling and, and availability. Right. So, but, you know, along with the hockey day too, um, What's kind of cool is we're going to figure out uh, opportunities for uh, organizations around town to be able to come down and skate and use the rink. And, wow, and, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so you'll have this almost ready ten days or two we're weeks hoping, ahead. You know, and, ahead of time if the weather's right. Right, right. So we're we're hoping that we'll uh, we'll be able to have it a few weeks ahead of time. Obviously, that helps the the committee work out any bugs uh, yeah. that we need to figure out as well. But uh, but. But more than anything, allow the community to have access. But maybe to it as even well. have a, like a Pee Wee or a Bantam game. Down Possibly, there, huh? yeah, yeah. That'd yep. be an idea. I, huh? You know, I know the schedule is being worked on as we speak. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll have more details here right. by uh, even this week. I'm, I'm hoping, but you know, th- it changes. So well, we'll have a couple other members of your committee come on be- way before the yeah. thing, so we can when you have more information, what's really going on, because we're still what are we four or five months out. Still four, yeah. one, two, yeah. three, four, yeah, four months out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, it's getting close. <laughs> it is getting close. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, you grew up in Duluth, right? I did, yes. Okay, and you uh, played your youth hockey at Glen Avon? Yep, yep. Okay, Started. and there were some good teams back then. Yeah, probably not, not so much maybe when I played, but actually Glen Avon is a home to uh, a little history. Is like, I think it's 1951 or 54, uh, a group of kids went out to Madison Square Garden as peewees, and uh, they took the train out. We just had a few of the guys from this team at our rink a few a few weeks ago, telling the stories of taking the train out to Madison Square Garden to play in the national championship, and actually won the national championship for peewees uh, during that uh, 51 or 54. I, unfortunately, I can't remember the exact right. date. But uh, so there's a little history there. And um, but I played uh, when I was playing. It was uh, Squirt D's. Squirt C's, Squirt B's, and Squirt A's. So, right. uh, and then we had a, a Pee Wee team there. Today they call them mites and squirts. Uh, those same levels. So, so, you, how many city teams were there? You think oh, back then, fifteen? Would probably. You say? I mean, it's just amazing uh, how many teams back in my time. I grew up in the '60s or '50s and '60s, yep. and that, and it seemed like every four blocks there was a. Youth at least, <laughs> yeah, at least eleven or yeah, I think it was eleven to fifteen. I mean, and and unfortunately, a lot of those rinks have uh, folded or or merged with uh, other rinks just right. due to numbers. You right. know, um, we were blessed with uh, a lot lot more kids, I guess, than playing the game or or just more kids in general in the town. So yeah, we're talking a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was a Pee Wee team back in the '60s at Lower Chester that five on that one team alone, five players went pro yeah i mean it's that's a, just amazing yeah that's amazing <laughs> okay then you you played at duluth east in your high school right yep and you yep. had the chance to go down to the state tournament we did yep uh 1991 it was uh coach randolph's uh third year of coaching so when when we had started as sophomores our group uh was his first year of coaching i think he's t- close to 30 years into coaching that that team right now right uh that's dating me um but uh yeah, we, we made it the state tournament. Um, it was a it was a fun experience because obviously it's a dream of every kid that in this state to play in that tournament. But you know we went in as complete underdogs. I think we had six or seven losses that season, which was probably double from any other team. Right. And uh, one of the things we kept seeing on TV is uh, uh, Lou Nanny and the others saying, "Who is this Duluth East team that's going to be playing at nine o'clock tonight?" and we got paired up against uh, Richfield in the first game. Darby Ooh, Hendrickson. Darby Hendrickson, yep. Uh, <laughs> the, one of the coaches of the Wild right now. He, um, him along with his brother and uh, a couple of other pretty high-profile players were expected to win the state tournament that year. Right. And we went in first game and just, we had a big team, so we came out hitting. And uh, we ended up beating them 5-1. to one. <laughs> it, it was an incredible experience to go out there and skate. Now, this was the St. Paul Civic Center, not right, the Excel right. at the time. The clear so glass. Clap, yep, clear boards. So to go out and and look up in that stadium at 18 years old and just 
see all those open seats during practice, and then the next night have it filled. 19,000 fans or whatever it could hold was breathtaking. You had a chance to practice back then? Oh, yeah, yeah, Wednesday. Really? Yeah, Wednesday. So the, the tournament we played in was the last grade eight, they called it. So it was oh, the okay. last time we had the uh, single A. Yeah, that's or, right. 92 or, yeah, came out with tier one, two, tier two. Tier that's one, right. tier two, and now yeah. you know single A, double A. But um, they, uh, yeah, so we were the last ones to play in that 18 tournament. So we would go down on Wednesdays because that night that day was open uh and um practice before before their thursday night game oh so, how neat yeah how experience that was it, it was incredible i i take um you know all my my uncle was home at the time and he videotaped every single game for us and so i have the vhs and we burned those to dvds a few years ago so every year the uh, state tournament comes on i try to show my kids uh, those dvds and they have no interest in watching <laughs> <laughs> they tell me how horrible we were <laughs> with our wooden sticks uh, that's and everything. That's funny. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, what was the score of the Richfield game? 5-1. 5-1, and yeah. then who did you play in the semis? Semis was uh, Burnsville, and um, that was a 2-1 overtime win. So um, that put us in the championship against Hill Murray. Right. and. And actually, even that game, we had them. Uh, we had Hill Murray, uh, I believe, going into the third period. We were up by one, and then just I wouldn't say it. I someone wouldn't say said there's a lot of there penalties. There were some penalties. I, you know, I wouldn't say what unraveled, but it just you could feel slowly feeling it kind of uh, drift away from our grasp. And but still, to this day, I, I wouldn't replace any right experience. Any experience. I had. I was also fortunate to play um, Division Three college hockey, where our team won a national championship down at River Falls, Wisconsin. Really? Yeah, and, and wow. that was an incredible experience. But, you know, I know it sounds cliche from all these, but taking, a, taking the Minnesota State Tournament was by far the, the, the highlight of my playing career. Now, that year, was your team expected to go, or who was the top teams up north here? Cause, because back at my time, they had a back door, and they had the best teams might have lost, but then they had a chance to get back in through the back door. Yeah. Uh, was Cloquet I don't, good? Cloquet then? was good. Yeah, because yeah, they had Cloquet. Langenbrunner and Young. No, Langenbrunner, I don't believe he... He might have been in ninth grade then. He might have been ninth grade. Um, but, he, you know, we, we played Cloquet three times that year, and, you know, we were... I, I was most nervous about the game that we went to state... Uh, the game we played them to go to state because we had already beat them twice. Oh, that's... You know, and that third time usually right. isn't a charm, and... and uh, it was a great, I think it was a two o'clock game down at the deck and there was people sitting in the, there, there were five people deep on the glass, people sitting in the aisles. I mean, it was, uh, it was an incredible experience. I mean, so you came out, I, we had no idea what to expect because Mike had kept us in the locker room most of the time because I think he had an idea of what was coming in terms of people and we hadn't played in front of a crowd like that ever. And, and um, you had Cloquet one side, East on the other, and it went into overtime and I, Rusty Fitzgerald got the game-winning goal, and we just went bananas, so pretty neat. You know, it's kind of funny that uh, a lot of you uh, back at that time, the players at Duluth East, have now your kids are on these Pee Wee and yep. Bantam teams, yep. double A's, I mean, traveling team, you know, so they must be in the blood. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, um, you know, my two line mates uh, – Derek Locker and Craig Fellman, uh, last year our boys played together on, uh, on a team. And they're actually, our kids are good friends. We, we're still really good friends, the, the three of us. And uh, having our kids, uh, you know, actually play on lines together or actually on the same team was a lot of fun for us to see and, um, and experience. So, you know, not only are we watching them, but we're also getting to hang out together and, and watch hockey. So it's, it's amazing. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's fun yeah. to, it's fun to see the cycle of kids that come through, you know, even at Glen Avon where my youngest, uh, my youngest son is, uh, now, um, we, we've got a handful of kids or guys that I played, played hockey with at that age as well. So that would be the squirt level, my two level. And, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat to see the people coming through. Oh, were you a rink rat back then? Would you, you know, I think the stories always get better as you get older, like how much we stayed outside. <laughs> yeah. I do remember, I recall days like, you know, guys like Sean Hill would be down there who are older, uh, right. uh, his brother Noel and, and Fellmans and stuff, you know, so we would, we would have days where we would just go down and play pickup hockey. And um, I don't think it's as frequent as I would like to think it was, but I know we were down there quite a bit. Right. And that's one of the beautiful things about hockey still up here is that 
um, these, that, that ice is open to these kids seven days a week and they take advantage of it. Yeah. You know, one, one of the things that I see with the, the hockey players is you get done with practice. We do an hour long practice <clears throat> outdoors and they'll rink rat for two hours yeah. afterwards if it, you know, depending on time. There's a lot of uh, East kids over the years. I mean, after practice from high school and that, they go back out in the rink. They and, do. You know, where in the Twin Cities, which I lived for 20 years, uh, a lot of these rinks, you, no one's there. I know. You, yep. I mean, what the, what happened? I lived down there, too, and uh, I, I would see that. I'd drive by. I vividly remember Edina. There was a, I think they had a rink right off of 162. Or 62 and yeah it just was, it was always empty and you know i think part of it is uh weather i mean right they're they're we're able to get ice a little quicker and maybe keep it a little longer right. here um which allows us to have these you know these seasons outside uh, our hockey seasons outside but um yeah i don't know i don't Do know you remember how many games you played back then in youth uh I, if, well for example squirt d's which was uh you know your first year I do remember playing about four games. It was all focused on skating. We had a great teacher uh, or coach, Linda Tezak was her name. And really? you know, the first few days, you know, or the first few weeks, I should say, of practice, I don't even think she let us use our sticks. Smart. It was all based on skating. And then you know you could you know bring, implement the or integrate the pucks a little bit into the game, and then at the end of the season we finally got to play a little tournament where I think we had three or four games. All right, that's the uh, number one thing really is skating and hockey. You know, if you can't skate, it's going to be a hard game to you know learn oh, no because question. you can't keep up the pace no more. No, there's too many good skaters, especially I mean. today. Yeah. 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 And now they're bigger and stronger. Like I just evaluated uh, Pee Wee's and. Uh, Bantams in Duluth here, and I noticed your kid. He got on the double A team a, mm -hmm. again, and truthfully, he was probably the he might be the best player on that team. But there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of good players returning on that good, team. Yep. But um, I noticed your kid is a pretty big kid already. Mm -hmm. How he is. is he 12 years He's old? He's 12. Yeah, 12. And how tall is he? Would you say five eight, five no, seven? No, probably five ten. Is he? <laughs> well, I mean, I so I've always thought I was five eleven, and when I brought him to the doctor a few weeks ago, we measured, we both measured ourselves, and we measured about the same. So I, I must have shrunk a little bit because <laughs> the doctor is convinced he's five ten and a half, or right around there, I believe. So you got one more year to talk even with him. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> you have to talk up. <laughs> but um, one thing I notice with uh, kids that are growing so fast. It's hard with the feet to keep up yeah, with everything, yep, you know? yep. and boy, he has to put a lot of time into his skating then to keep up with the, I mean, the real good skaters and that then. Yeah, so. no question. Yeah, he, he works at it, yeah. you know. Um, he skates uh, a little bit in the summertime and, um, you know, after the, after the season and everything. So, uh, but more than anything, he works on his game outside of it with uh, shooting, stick handling, you know, yeah. that all this stuff kind of on his own. And That's good. As a parent, I've... I've I've given them the tools because I kind of know what you need to do and I know what I didn't do. Right. Um, and, uh, but, at, but that's all I do. I give them the tools and then just say, this is up to you. I can't make you want to play the game. Right. And I think that's one of the things that um, we as parents have a hard time doing is, is, is just letting them, let it come to them. If they want to do it, they're going to want, if they're going to want to do it, they're going to do it. And if they don't want to do it, that's okay too. Right. You know they're kids. You gotta let them have fun. Yeah, you do. I mean, if they lose that fun, then it's not gonna work. If they don't like going out and shooting pucks, or if they don't like going out and stick handling, right. or, or any of that stuff, it, it's pointless. Right. I mean, I didn't like doing any of that, so I didn't do it. And right. um, I, it probably hurt me a little bit, but you know, I still was able to play. But um, these kids today, they're uh, the passion in some of these kids to me is amazing. At least around the group of friends that uh, my son hangs with. Uh, I, I think these kids could skate uh, eight hours out of a day and not be tired of it. Yeah, just like our, our time, that's all we did. We hanged out the rink from yeah. any time we had. Yeah, it's I mean, it's it's incredible. <laughs> and, and I love to see the passion. I mean, it, right. it's I think it's uh, well directed. Um, f I mean, the focus is I think great for them. Okay, it's, give me a like right now during the season now. What would be an average week? I mean. For him, what would he be doing after school? I mean, would 
he goes to pra he has to go to practice almost every day, but right. Sunday, right? Right. Well, the, no, not, they don't have. A, if there's they, not a game, I yeah, mean. they don't have the rules of high school, so they can go on Sundays and they oh, can okay. go Saturdays. Okay. So um, I think the average week is about f four to five practices a week. And this um, is because it's a traveling team. You're on the, the top team in the yeah. So, I mean, if you were on a, just a B team, you're not going to have that many practices. You go out and rink rat and learn just to have fun and skate. Yeah, basically. and you know, and I think uh, um, I would personally like to see, I'd like to see all the levels at Pee Wee's be fairly equal in, in practice. And I'm not sure, I, th I feel that's where kids get better. And as you get, if you get good quality coaching um, that understands how to develop kids and keep practices fun. That's one of the biggest differences I find um, today is I didn't like to practice when I was younger. Uh, practices were a lot of standing around and watching uh, your buddies. Too organized. Through, yeah, you just wanted to have structure. fun. Just go out and do it. <laughs> one of the things that we, you know, we've adopted at Glen Avon, and I know most of the rinks around here have, is the uh, the American development model uh, with USA Hockey. Okay. And. Um, there, there's a lot to the whole model, obviously, but one of the one of the key things is is they talk about small area games, and breaking practices where you have 30 kids on the ice. So now you have efficient use of ice, first of all. But then secondly, you're breaking kids into stations. So maybe you have seven to nine kids per station, depending on how many stations you're running, and it does a couple of things. One, it, it shrinks the ice. So now they got to play in small areas. And I think if you ask any coaches from uh, uh, Mike Yo down to the Mike One coaches. Right. Uh, small area games are critical right. for uh, creativity, uh, puck control. Learning all the fine spaces yep. and that. But the other thing it does is it keeps them moving. They're always constantly moving. So, you know, we don't, we rarely do uh, conditioning practices. In, you know, I'm talking at the rink level. Right. Uh, because these kids are dripping wet when it's zero <laughs> degrees outside because they're always moving. But they're always touching pucks too. They're always having an opportunity to play the game. And when you're in that tight area, um, it just allows for that. So right. that's one of the biggest differences I can see from growing up to till now is um, the education about how to develop kids has improved significantly. And, and quite honestly, I think it's probably why you'd see a lot of these, the speed of the game changing and, and the talent of this game changing. Right. And a lot of kids from the East, East End especially, I mean, or that... Mike Randolph started taking your, I mean, these younger kids at squirt level now. He used to just take Pee Wee and Bantams, mm -hmm. but now, I mean, there. I, I'm being biased, but I think there's no better guy on the ice to teach the game and that to yep. these kids and that. And if they buy into what he's saying, you're going to get some good hockey players out of this, you know. Well, and what's great is he's just working on skill development. When he's talking about stuff, it's about effort and um, – the importance of developing the fundamentals, skating, shooting, and passing. He's not a big proponent of going and playing a bunch of bunch of games. You know, they may scrimmage a, a day or two here out of you know, the, or a day out of the week uh, during his camps. But um, I, I agree with you. I think um, he has a lot of respect from these kids. You know, they look up to this team, and you know he's been there for a long time. But but he also knows what he's doing. And yeah. You know, as long as they listen, he's going to get the effort out of them. Right. And um, no, I think it's great that he's he's uh, he's doing these camps and opening it up, you know, to younger ages because um, I, sometimes just hearing it from you know a lot of the parents that are coaching at the rinks are well, are parents. Right. And sometimes that message still can the get tired. Dad and yep. The, that's right. Whatever. <laughs> now that's got somebody from the outside who they look up to uh, uh, teaching them some of the same things. But just in a different way, it's it's very valuable for us to have. So, right. So, does your kid talk about like um, like I want to play on the high school team, mm -hmm. or do I want to go to college, or be a pro like this guy on the yeah, pro? Actually, does he talk that oh, way? Yeah, or? yeah. <laughs> Both of my guys do because um, I have a nine year old as well. Oh, you have a nine year old? Yeah, he's playing squirts. Is he? So they they both do, and um, you know, somebody asked Jacob, who is my older. Uh, who, where he wanted to play college, and he's already got that figured out. <laughs> only because Jack Eichel played at Boston. That's oh, okay. Not, you know, so, but no, he really follows. Uh, he follows the NHL pretty close. Okay. I mean, he could tell you pretty much about any player that plays, and um, he's he loves uh, um, 
studying the game, really. Right. I mean, I don't think he sits down and studies what each player is doing, but he really he watches videos. And this is the other thing I was going to say. A game. It's, this is kind of a game changer, in my opinion. These kids that are able to watch YouTube and ESPN and, and these things that weren't available when we right. played. What I found coaching these kids at younger levels is they, they try these moves that they see, you know? So they're, they, they got Jack Eichel or whoever the – Connor McDavid, whoever's the big guy now, do some fancy yeah, move the and they go guys. out and try it. Yeah. And, uh, but it improves their creativity right. significantly. So, yeah. Well, but, that's great. Uh, yeah. Th talking about the Wild, uh, they were – they had three games in uh, four nights here, and, but they won two over the three. But last night they put their – Second goalie in Darby Kemper and uh, didn't have a good night. No, no, that was a rough that's one. a tough. That was that's a tough for a goalie to sit around and then go in the game like that. And of course, you're going to have some bad games in it. But oh, yeah, yeah. Nope. I I fortunately missed a couple of those goals, but was able yeah. to kind of see some of the comeback last night. Um, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, outside of the goalies, I I could not think of a better role model than having a guy like Zach Parise. So as a father with kids playing the game, um, to have a guy like Zach Parise in your, in your backyard, so to speak, or, or the team that they look up to as the leader, it, he's unbelievable. That goal he got last night, right? The way he's nothing's stopped. flashy, but he got hit in works, front of the net. He works, he works, he works. I grabbed my wife. She was sitting and <laughs> reading something. I'm like, you got to watch it. You got to see what he's doing. You know, and um, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. And um, it, he exemplifies what I think every parent tries to tell their kid. I mean, if you want to play at whatever level you want to play at, this is the way you play. You know, you, you need goal scorers and you need um, uh, playmakers, but all of those players can play with the grit and energy and passion that that guy does. Right. There's two players I've been uh, following hockey pretty much. I probably see more hockey games in Minnesota more than any other, even scouts mm -hmm. in Minnesota itself than that. And then Parisi's one of them, watching Hall every shift. Every shift, he gives 100%. Yeah. There's another player that played for Duluth East, and it's Coach Randolph's kid. The kid's small, yeah. and no one believed Jeez. in him every year. So he had to prove himself every year. Yeah. But he just he's so dedicated to this game and learning the game. Yeah. He's been doing it for 15 years, doing this stuff, yeah. you know, studying, doing it, practicing, shooting, just like your kid's doing now. Yeah. You know, it, he, it's he's just a fun, amazing. He's a fun story. And yep. if you do that, it's going to be good. Well, we're coming pretty close to the end. Um, but getting back to Hockey Day, Minnesota, I mean, this is going to be a big event down there at the Bayfront. And, um, uh, you're going to have to start selling some tickets pretty soon, yep. but you'll probably keep it to a minimum because you don't know the weather yet. Yeah, and that's what, you know, right now I think we're 2,000 is the number that we're, we're talking about just in the event that we, because the last thing we want to do is sell more tickets than the number of people we can hold at Heritage right. if we happen to have to go inside. And with this being an El Nino winter, there's uh, definitely that possibility. Once we are pretty sure, based on extended forecasts, that we'll be going outside, then we're going to make a, a, a big push to try to get as many tickets sold as possible. But they are available online right now. And Okay, where I, do you go online? If I were prepared, I would have brought You just go to Hockey website. Is there a Hockey Day Minnesota? Hockey, huh? there's not, it's not a general website. It's Hockey Day Minnesota 2016. I think okay. you know, you'd have to Google that and okay. probably find And something. it'll be out there pretty soon all over yeah. in the rinks and yeah. that where you and can hopefully find we can, tickets at Heritage or something. Hopefully we can get back when we've got a lot of these details ironed out right. and, and with some other committee members and go yeah, through we'll too. Yeah, we'll bring so. some more in and do this again and um, get you in right before the... Uh, Hockey Day Minnesota, too. Perfect. So Perfect. thanks for coming, uh, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. It's been fun. Good. So we'll see you um, next week on Minnesota Hockey Connection. You can find us on minnesotahockeyconnection.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again.